Hey everyone, in this video I'm going to show you how to knit the head and tail of a hippopotamus. With each of my animals, I like to include a list of that animal's attributes. Hippos are very interesting animals with seemingly contradictory attributes. They're aggressive and loud, yet shy, and they're sedentary, yet dangerous. They're amphibious and have very thick skin. They're also solitary, hungry, loud, and unpredictable. You'll need about three ounces or 50 grams of DK or sport weight yarn, or about three to four times that if you're using worsted weight yarn. You'll also need about a yard of darker contrast yarn for the eyes. I like using a black yarn with a little bit of sparkle. Remember to use knitting needles that are at least two sizes smaller than what's recommended for the yarn you're using. Some other things you'll need are stuffing, a crochet hook for the crochet loops or fringe stitches, scissors, and a tapestry needle for sewing the seams. It's also a good idea to have some type of row counter so that you can keep track of which row you're on. This is a fairly simple pattern with no color changes. The techniques and stitches you'll need for this animal are stockinette, basic increases and decreases, mattress stitch for the seams, and crochet loop stitch for the tail. Since this is a pattern video, I'm assuming that you already know how to do the basic stitches like knit, purl, knit two together, and purl two together. So I'll tell you where to do these stitches, but I won't take the time to explain how to do them. Before we get to the pattern, just a few things. I knit in combination style, so it may look a little strange. I use it because it's faster and easier, especially for purling. You don't have to knit in combination style, but if you'd like to learn how to do combination knitting, look in the description area of this video for a link to a video that explains how. Please like this video and share it with your knitter friends. Then subscribe to my channel so it can grow and more people can find my videos. After you click subscribe, if you click that little bell, you'll get notifications whenever I release new videos. Click show more in the description area to find lots of links to additional videos such as additional animal and clothing patterns, special techniques and stitches that I use in my patterns, and my favorite place to get yarn. When you finish your project, please share photos. I've created a Painted Cricut Facebook page just for that. You can find a link for that also in the description area. And one last thing, if you prefer to work from a written pattern, you can also find links to the shops where I sell them in the description area. This video focuses only on the head and tail of the hippopotamus. All of my animals use the same body and leg patterns, so I've made separate videos for those pieces. You can find links to those videos in the description area too. I love to knit a tutu and ballerina slippers for the hippo, like what you see here. If you want to do the same, remember to knit the legs with longer feet for the back or bottom feet, otherwise the shoes won't fit very well. The only special stitch in this pattern is the crochet loop stitch for the little loops on the tail. I'll show you how to do those in this video. Okay, let's get started with the head. To start the head, cast on 10 stitches in the color you're using for the nose. Almost all my patterns start at the nose and work to the back of the head, but in this case, we're starting at the back of the head. Be sure to leave enough of a yarn tail that you'll have something to sew with once you're done. On row one, just purl across without any increases or decreases. Remember that I use combination style knitting, so my purling will probably look strange to you, and that's why. Row two is an increase row. You'll knit two stitches and then increase one, do that across to the last two stitches, and then knit those last two. You should have 14 stitches at the end of this row. By the way, my favorite way of increasing is often called make one. It's one of the most invisible increases. You make it by knitting into the stitch on the row just below the stitch on the right needle. On row three, you'll just purl across. Row 
Row 4 is another increase with the pattern of knitting 3 and increasing 1. Knit the last 2 stitches and you should have 18 stitches now. Rows 5 through 7 are basic stockinette, so just knit across on the right sides and purl on the wrong sides without any increases or decreases. Row 8 is another increase row. Knit the first two and increase once. Then follow the pattern of knitting three and increasing one till you get to the last stitch. And just knit that last stitch. You should have 24 stitches at this point. Continue stockinette until you get to row 16. So that means you're going to purl on the wrong side rows and knit on the right side rows, but don't make any increases or decreases until you get to row 16.
On row 16, knit the first four, and then knit two and increase once, do that three times. Then knit the next four, then increase once and knit twice, do that three times, and finally knit the last four stitches. You should have 30 stitches now. Continue in stockinette for rows 17, 18, and 19. On row 20, knit the first four, and then knit three and increase once three times. Then knit the next four. Then you're going to do a pattern of increasing once and knitting three, and you're going to do that three times again. Just knit the last four stitches. That should give you 36 stitches. Purl across on row 21. On row 22, knit the first four stitches, and then do a pattern of knitting four and increasing once until you get to the last eight stitches, and knit those without any increases. That will give you 42 stitches. Purl across on row 23. On row 24, knit 7 and increase 1 until you get to the last 7 and just knit those. That will give you 47 stitches. Curl across on row 25.
On row 26, we're going to add the nostrils with a bobble stitch. Knit the first 18 stitches. Now in the next stitch, you'll form a bobble. And here's how you do that. Knit into the next stitch, but don't pull the stitch off. Then yarn over and knit again into that same stitch and then pull that stitch off like normal. So that should give you three stitches where you normally would have only had one. Now turn your work and purl into those three stitches. Turn it again and then over those three stitches knit into the front and back of the first stitch. Just knit the next stitch by itself and then knit into the front and back of the third stitch. Now you've got five stitches. And you're going to lift the second, third, fourth, and fifth stitches one at a time over the first stitch on the needle. That forms the first nostril. Knit the next nine stitches. Then do the bobble stitch once more for the second nostril. And I'll walk you through that once more. Knit into the next stitch, but don't pull the stitch off. Then yarn over and knit again into that same stitch. Now turn your work and purl into those three stitches. Turn again and then over those three stitches, knit into the front and back of the first stitch. Simply knit the next stitch and knit into the front and back of the third stitch. That gives you five stitches and lift the second, third, fourth, and fifth stitches one at a time over the first stitch on your needle. And that completes your second bobble or nostril. Now knit the final 18 stitches. And even though we did a lot of increasing and decreasing, you still should only have 47 stitches at the end of row 26. On row 27, we're going to begin decreasing to get the rounded nose. Purl 5 and then purl 2 together. Do that across to the last 5 stitches and simply purl those. That should give you 41 stitches. Knit across on row 28. On row 29, the decrease pattern is purl 2 and then purl 2 together. Do that pattern across to the last stitch and then just purl it.
and now you should have 31 stitches. Knit across on row 30. On row 31, the pattern is purl 1 and then purl 2 together. Do that pattern across to the last stitch and then purl it. And that should give you 21 stitches. Knit across on row 32. Row 33 is the final row. Purl the first stitch and then follow the pattern of purling once and purling two together. Do that till you get to the last two stitches and just purl those. At the end of this row, you should have 15 stitches. Don't cast off here. Instead, cut your yarn, leaving enough both to sew the seam and to attach the head to the body later. Thread this tail onto a tapestry needle and then carefully thread the tail back through each stitch on the knitting needle. Just to be safe, I like to thread the tail through those same stitches one more time and then pull tight so that I get a nice closure for the hippo's mouth. Now sew the bottom head seam a little less than halfway from the nose to the bottom of the head. Then, take the tail that you left at your cast-on edge and weave this through each stitch of the cast-on edge to close the stitches at the back of the head. Then sew this end of the head seam a little less than halfway to the bottom of the head you want to leave a wide enough opening at the bottom where you can stuff it. That finishes up the knitting for the main headpiece. Now we need to knit the ears. Let's knit them now. Start by casting on eight in the main color. Don't forget to leave an end for sewing with later. I like to knit both ears at the same time, which helps them be more consistent. I do this by finding the other end of the yarn and then casting on for the second ear with that end. So now for each ear, here's what you're gonna do. Pro
curl across on row one. On row two, the pattern is knit two and increase one. Do that three times and then knit to the last two stitches. You should have 11 stitches. Purl across on row three. On row four, the increase pattern is knit three and increase one. Do that to the last two stitches, and that should give you 14 stitches. Purl across on row five. On row six, knit four and increase once to the last two stitches and then knit those. And that should give you 17 stitches. Purl across on row seven. Knit across on row eight. On row nine, we decrease using the pattern of purling one and then purling two together. Do that till you have two stitches left and purl each of them separately. And then you should have 12 stitches. Row 10 is the last row and you'll just simply knit across. Cut the yarn, leaving enough to sew with. Thread this tail into a tapestry needle, and then carefully thread the tail back through each stitch on the knitting needle. Again, I like to thread the tail back through those same stitches one more time, and then pull it tight so that the ear has a nice tip. Now fold the ear in half and then sew the side seam back down to the cast on edge.
I like to fold the ear so that there's a little bit of an indentation on the front side. When we're ready to assemble all the head pieces, we'll sew the ears at the back of the head. And now it's time to assemble all the pieces. I have an entire video dedicated to assembling the animal, so in this video I'm only going to focus on the head. Grab some scissors, a tapestry needle, some stuffing, and a scrap of darker yarn for the eyes. I like using yarn with a little bit of a sparkle for that. Finding the positions for the ears can be a little tricky. I like to start by holding them into position with my hands just to get an idea of where they look best. And then I use the yarn tails to sew just a stitch or two as a temporary stitch that I can remove easily if the position isn't quite right. I also like to sew across the bottom edge of the ear and pull that tight so the ear has a stronger indentation. Then I move back and forth between the two ears, sewing a little more on both sides. Since the hippo's nostrils are already in place, you can also use them to help position the ears. This can take some time, but it's not good to rush here because the position of the eyes and ears can make a huge difference in the final look of your animal. After the ears are sewn on, it's easier to find the position for the eyes. Thread the darker thread onto your needle, and then bring that up through the hole at the bottom of the head and into position for the first eye. For most animals, the eyes look best below the forehead and closer to the nose. However, for the hippo, I like to position the eyes closer to the ears. A French knot works well for the eyes. Pull the yarn out at the position where you want the eye. Then stick your needle back in through that same place and come back out one stitch away. Be careful pulling the yarn here. You want to leave a little loop that you can stick your needle into to begin the knot. Pull the loop snug against the needle and then while holding it in place, wrap the yarn five to six times around the needle. More wraps here will give you larger eyes, but more loops can also be difficult to manage, and it's also difficult to create an eye with clean edges if you have more loops. Then hold the loop and wraps carefully with one hand as you pull the needle and yarn through them, creating a little circle of loops. To secure the little circle of loops into position, I like to add a couple more loops by stitching close near the bottom of the eye on the head and then coming back out through the center of the loops. I like to do this a few times until the eye feels secure on all sides. Follow these same steps to add the second eye. That's the final head detail, and now we can sew the rest of the bottom head seam. And now we're ready for the tail. Cast on 17 in the main color. Then bind off as you knit back across these same stitches.
Before cutting the yarn, insert your crochet hook into the last stitch and then crochet 10 chain stitches. Then slip stitch into the stitch where you started. Repeat this two more times. For a little variety, I often make the second or middle crochet loop two to three stitches longer, but that's optional. And that's it for this video. Now you've got the head and tail, which are the most difficult and detailed pieces. Now you just need the body and legs. As I said earlier, all of my animals use the same body and leg patterns, so you'll find those patterns in separate videos. Look in the description for those links. And remember that if you want your hippo to have shoes, like these ballet slippers, be sure to knit legs with the long feet for the bottom legs. There's also a video that shows my favorite tips and tricks for assembling all the pieces together. Look for that in the description area as well. Here's a quick overview of how it all goes together. Thanks for watching this video. Don't forget to like it and subscribe to my channel so you can get notified when I release new animal and clothing patterns. And share a photo of your completed project on my Facebook page. See you next time.